Okay, now and we're going to talk about banner ad animation and using scripting for animation instead of using the timeline in Adobe Animate. You'll see here, here I'm at the Greensock website, greensock.com. And Greensock is a JavaScript library that is great for animation and it has all kinds of cool th methods and functions that allow you to chain events together to make animation really, really simple. Um, so GSAP has been around for a long time. There used to be a GSAP uh, plugin for Flash that allowed you to use ActionScript for animation. And GSAP has evolved over the years to keep up with the times. And this particular platform is good for, with JavaScript development for HTML5 documents. So one of the things about Adobe Animate is that we can create documents that are HTML5 canvas files. So when you go to File to New, you have an option to create either an ActionScript file or an HTML5 canvas file. So, and in the Publish settings, for an HTML canvas file, you have a bunch of different settings for the HTML, the JS files, the image settings, uh, all kinds of things like where the images go, that creates a folder for you, where exported sounds go, things like that. So Adobe Animate is doing a lot of heavy lifting for you in the back end to get that kind of stuff done for you. So here I have a, a really simple scene with a couple different elements on it. And I just want to lock that for a second. So I have a background layer, I have a BB-8 layer, and I have a logo layer. Uh, the background layer, I'm just going to lock that, has uh, just this blue gradient on it. I have a logo and I have BB-8. So the logo is a movie clip and it has an instance name of logo. And then BB-8 is has an instance name of BB-8. Now these instance names are really important. It's what's going to allow us to target those items when it comes to JavaScript. I have an actions layer, and in that actions layer, I have an action. And what I want to do here is I want to tie in the GSAP animation platform, and then I want to be able to use their methods in order to create an animation. So in the actions panel, there are two sections, scene and global. So let's go over to global first. And in global, there's an include section. So in this global script that's being added is the GSAP library. You can see here GSAP min.js is being pulled in and you can see the version. You can pull in multiple libraries if you needed to. You click this button and you choose add from URL and then you paste in the URL for that particular library and then you're ready to go. Um, so if I, let me close that up and go into scene one. Scene one has actions only in frame one. So we're gonna take a look at these actions and I'm gonna try to break them down for you and tell you what they do. So first of all, we create a variable called TL, which is short for timeline. And we use a method called new timeline max. A method is a function that is going to hold some parameters. And you can see within the parentheses here, we have two parameters. We have a repeat parameter and a repeat delay parameter. So this is gonna repeat three times, and there's gonna be a half a second delay in between the three times that it plays. So that's the method timeline max. And then I'm giving it a variable called TL so that I can call on it a lot easier. So then with TL, I'm using the dot from method and what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to do certain things in sequences. So the first from statement is going to affect BB-8. The second from statement is going to affect the logo. So let's just take a look at what's going to happen. So notice we're using this. This is a special identifier. It's related to this particular stage, this particular level, and this particular object called BB-8. Remember and recall that we gave this an instance name of BB-8, so that's why um, that's what we're calling. That's the object that we're calling on. It's going to animate over a duration of one second, 
And then in these brackets, we're going to give it what how we want it to animate. So on the Y axis, it's going to animate from 300 pixels down. The scale X on the X axis, it's going to scale by from zero. Uh, it's going to scale from zero and it's going to scale up. Okay, so you're going to see that. And then ease, it's going to scale up to its current size, I should say. I'm sorry. So scale X and scale Y is going to start at zero and it's going to scale up to this size. And then there's an easing value that's being applied, ease back out, and that's going to make the animation look a lot smoother and um, more professional. And then we have the second from statement, and this is going to target the logo, again over a period of one second. And it's going to slide in uh, from the left at 200 pixels, and its alpha is going to start at zero, and it's going to go to its current alpha state, which is one. And then on the end here, in green, and the quotation marks, this is a delay. So this from statement won't fire until a half second after. That's what this plus equals means. It's just going to delay it uh, for, for a second there. So if I go ahead and play the animation, I'm hitting Command Return. It's going to open that in a browser window. And you're going to see the animation slide in. And you can see that BB-8 grows from the center up. And it's going to play three times. And after the third time, it's just going to stop. Notice that this is an HTML window. Um, so this would be like a banner ad. This, this is a huge banner ad, I know. But um, there are different sizes of banner ads. But uh, this one's pretty big. OK. Now, a couple other things. When you're creating banner ads, usually you're going to work with a marketing vendor that's going to give you some kind of a link, um, a link code. And that link code would go into the Actions panel. And it would be applied to a button. So I'm going to just unhide this. And let's talk about this for a second. So this is an invisible button. It has an instance name of CTA. And if I double click on this invisible button, you see that it has four frames, just like any other button. The only frame that has content, though, is the hit area. So that's the target area. That's the area that you can click on. And so we want it to just be in the hit area so that way it's invisible. It doesn't cover up anything. You saw the exported movie, and you, you didn't see the button. So in the timeline, I'll go back to the main timeline. Um, if I hide this and I lock this layer, you won't see the effects of that, but you'll still need that button uh, to perform whatever functions you need for marketing. So that's banners with JavaScript and the GreenSock animation platform. I highly encourage you to spend some time on this page to learn more about the GSAP animation platform and all the cool things that it can do. There's some amazing stuff with staggers and triggering and uh, timeline control. It's a really, really awesome uh, animation library.